So I want to talk about, um, I'm going to just going to give uh, just an overview of, of where we're at with Wagtail and um, how the last year has been and how the next year might be. And I, for those of you who were here last year, I did, I did something similar. So uh, you, uh, someone asked me last night uh, if I kind of made any promises about where we were going to be and, uh, uh, and whether or not uh, I, I was going to have to kind of confess that we hadn't achieved any of I think somebody watching the stream... And, no. Apparently, we're having audio issues on the screen. Just testing now. Seems to be better. Okay, hopefully, people in the streaming world can now hear us. Okay. All right, let's give that a try. Sorry about that. Thanks, Tim. So I'm going to I'm going to break this up into three sections. There, what's what's going well, what's what's not going so well, and then what's coming next. And I want to start with the positive stuff. And there's a lot more positive stuff than uh, than negative stuff. And uh, one of the first things is that um, can everyone see the screens? Okay. Um, we don't need we don't need the third screen too. Um, one of the one of the things that's uh, been really lucky for us as uh, as Wagtail as, uh, as in the Wagtail community is that uh, we picked Python for um, and, and Django when we when we first created Wagtail in 2014 and um, and Python was uh, you know was still the amazing language as it is today but uh, I haven't done a very good job with showing the axes here but uh, it was you know it wasn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't one of kind of primary development languages in the last two two or three years. Python's really taken off, so you might be aware that Python is now the fastest growing language. And that's not actually not driven so much because of web development, it's because of uh, data science and machine learning, two of the kind of most interesting, exciting parts of computer science, where uh, Python has become almost the, the lingua franca. And, and uh, that's great for us because we're kind of, you know, we're, we're riding this wave of, uh, of Python popularity. And uh, at the same time, you know, in the, in, the, in the Django community, we don't like to talk about winners and losers. We're all kind of, you know, inclusive and, uh, and friendly. But um, there, you know, there were some other Django-based CMSs. There still are some, some great Django CMSs. But uh, Wagtail, sometime in the last year, overtook the others, uh, particularly have used the, uh, this, you know, this somewhat flawed Git stop, GitHub star metric. Um, and uh, so we're now the most popular Python CMS in the world's most popular language, which feels like a, you know, good place to be. Um, and we have some we have some really big name users. Uh, and, uh, I probably mentioned some of these last time, and there, there are some new ones. I was at um, I was at uh, DjangoCon US in San Diego last year, and someone stopped me in the corridor and said, uh, "Thank you for Django." I always feel a bit embarrassed when people say that because you know it's really this is very little to do with me, but. Uh, Anyway, of course, I accepted his, his thanks. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, uh, and he was from Apple. And uh, they are, you know, this is, they, 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 he, he showed me, and this is not a kind of big public-facing site that they're allowed to talk about, but he showed me how they're using Wagtail. And, you know, this, it's just amazing to be stopped in a corridor by someone from Apple. And then, you know, I probably spoke last time about Google, who, who use Wagtail quite widely now on, on their big public-facing websites like google.blog and cloud.google.com. Um, and the NHS National Health Service, it's been a really big deal for us, based in the UK. This is the world's fifth, fifth biggest employer. And at, at Torchbox, we focus on non-profit clients, so people making the world a better place. And um, that's generally quite a risk-averse sector. And for us, when the NHS very publicly moved their main website, nhs.uk, to Wagtail, uh, and which was described as the, 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 the biggest public sector migration in the UK, um, that was a big kind of shift for us in, in the, uh, the way that Wagtail was perceived, particularly in our sector. Um, I also used to talk about NASA. They were a kind of early adopters with, with some of their sites, but actually they've, uh, they've, they've, they're doing more and more. And um, uh, I was lucky enough to be at um, uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory last year who were adopting Wagtail for their main website. Um, and these are just in it's incredible names. It's incredible to be able to talk about people like this. Mozilla, uh, I want to, there's kind of a few people I want to, want to draw out, particularly Mozilla. And we have uh, Alan here from Mozilla Foundation, uh, who, if you want to meet him, will say nice things about Wagtail in, in the break. Um, and 
they are, I mean, I guess unlike, unlike some of the others, Mozilla are using Wagtail, but they're also doing it in a, you know, in a kind of typically Mozilla way where everything is open source and they are really interested and willing in contributing to the project, in, um, which, is, which is fantastic. We're, we're actually working with Mozilla at the moment on a, on a new donations project. So this is going to be for donate.mozilla.org, which you know, takes in, that's, that's like where most of Mozilla's, Mozilla's coming, funding comes from. And we're building on Wagtail. But, and it's going to end up being a really, a really nice, fast, focused platform for taking donations that's going to be used by Mozilla. But Mozilla are, you know, donating donate.mozilla.org as well. So for any other organization that's taking, that's taking donations, they're going to be able to use this package. And that's, you know, just like the dream of open source, that you get paid to build something for someone and then make it available for the whole community to use. And then lastly, um, the, the, there, there are lots of governments around the world using Wagtail, but um, they're, they're the UK and the US ones I want to bring out in particular, not, you know, partly because of their, because I'm obviously from the UK and you're mainly from the US, but uh, the US government, it's the US government agencies, in particular, Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, who are represented here today, I think, by nine people. Is that right? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, and they are also running a really impressive open source project. So if you want to know how to build a big Wagtail site with, uh, with a lot of data and, um, and, a kind of, and you want to see a big project, project evolve, then you should just, just star them on GitHub because uh, their project happens in a very expert and public way. And, uh, but the really big thing for us is that they've also been supporting Wagtail through the skills of their staff. And uh, we have two members of CFPB on, on the Wagtail core team. And so in the last year, we've also, we've also had some big features. And um, it's sometimes hard to pick out the big features because every time we do a release, then you know, there's loads of stuff that comes in from the community. And obviously, some features mean more to, to, to some people than others. But we, I think we've done a really good job of keeping on top of uh, release versions. So we, we are always like, in sync with the Django versions. And similarly with Python, we were you know, very, very quick with Python 3.7 support. Draft tail was one of the big, big improvements in the last year in Wagtail. So this is the, the rich text editor. Uh, before, we were using something called hello.js. We kind of want to constantly focus on making the best possible authoring experience. And uh, it turns out that quite a lot of that is, is about is handling rich text. And you know things that you might not think about when you're first designing a content management system about the experience of copying content from a Word document and pasting it in and thinking about what, what information you want to keep and, what you, and, and how that should be discarded. And lots of kind of little subtle edge cases around that. And um, in the end, it turned out that, uh, that, that Hello.js was a good place for us to start, but, um, that, but there were some flaws that, that are shared by lots of the kind of rich text editors that you get in content management systems. And um, so we have introduced a new rich text editor. It's called Drafttail. That development was led almost completely and delivered almost completely by my colleague Thibaut, who's here and uh, is going to be talking to us later. It's a really amazing achievement, and it's also available, you know, it's, as a package to use outside Wagtail in, in other in other platforms. Salior is an e-commerce engine. Some of you may be familiar with a pretty cool e-commerce product, open source. Uh, and they're also using Drafttail, which has been good for us to see. Um, the starter page. This is something that was started actually last uh, last Jang last Wagtail space uh, here in Philadelphia last year. Uh, Tim led, led on this, and there were a group of people here who, who did this. And some of you may know that in Django itself, that uh, Django has a new starter page um, about maybe 18 months, two years ago. And so we, we kind of uh, replicated that with Wagtail. And, um, and it was, it's kind of a nice story behind that because, it, I mean, it's, it, it just it's, uh, it makes a much more interesting experience when you start using Wagtail. You just get this kind of glossy page and just you have a little bit more of a buzz of excitement when, after, you've, after you've done the kind of five steps to get Wagtail started. Um, but uh, it, had a, it was also nice the way that kind of this, this particular project worked, that it started in a sprint after Wagtail space here in Philadelphia, and then it continued in our next event in Minsk in Belarus and maybe got finished off in Arnhem in the Netherlands. And uh, it's just quite it's just cool watching how these, these, these projects take off. There's been a lot of focus on accessibility as well. Um, the, there's going to be some talks about this later. Thibaut's going to talk about this. Uh, Zarina's going to talk about accessibility. Um, I'm going to talk about it a bit more, so I'm going to stop there. But that's, that's, uh, that's been, I think, a really important focus of uh, Wagtail's development in the last year. We have, uh, I think, you know, one of the really nice things about Wagtail has been that uh, 
uh, as well as the, the the online communities, we've made a focus we've, of, of meeting up in person, like things like this. And um, and you know, it's it's wonderful how much you can do on Slack and GitHub and all these other tools that we have available. But I think uh, encouraging people to 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 meet in real life, just you know, even once a year, makes a big difference to 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 how how the community feels about itself. And um, I think so. We're, we're really happy with the events that we've been having. The core team's been growing as well. So uh, it was um, it was a kind of important thing for me coordinating the project at Torchbox that um, we we were not. Uh, the, the, core, the, the, rep, the proportion of the core team from people of Torchbox should be in a minority. And that happened sort of three or four years ago. Um, and now there's 19 people in the core team, of which five are from Torchbox. And uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the, with the growing team. And uh, it's kind of, we, we have weekly meetings. They used to be in the kind of middle of the day in the UK time every Wednesday. But now, because we have people across lots of time zones, we have to have one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And you know, even so, that means that our kind of friends from Australia had to wake up at some crazy hour, but um, we're very grateful to them. And the community support has been doing really well. Hopefully some of you who are already involved in Wagtail have experienced this. We, uh, we had a few channels before. We had um, kind of email support and uh, Google Groups, um, but we've, we've kind of made, for, uh, we've made an effort to consolidate these on, on Slack and Stack Overflow. And um, the Slack channel is really growing and it's really supportive and uh, there are a lot of people now who, and it's really nice seeing people who, who start by asking questions and then a couple of months later they're, they're answering questions and that's lovely to see. But obviously Slack is, you know, it's wonderful for those, uh, that kind of immediate real-time support, but it's not great for, uh, for finding the problems that people have solved in the past and uh, so we're always encouraging people to use Stack Overflow and uh, I want to keep doing that because it just means that... Uh, we know, you know, whenever, just whenever we can create an answer to a commonly used question, this is going to make things simpler for people in, in the long run. But I'm really happy with how, how community support has developed and improved over the last year. And part of that has been contributions as well. So there are loads now of fantastic packages for Wagtail that are actively developed and maintained, that have great documentation and tests. Uh, I won't go through all of these now, but I will just mention Wagtail Woosh. People know what Woosh is. It's like a, if, you, if you don't want to install... If you want really good search, but you don't want to install um, Elasticsearch, then Woosh is a, it's a Django package or a Python package that, um, that gives, it's, it's a bit like kind of SQLite, but for, for search engines. And uh, this, this um, is a new search backend for, uh, for Wagtail. Um, Wagtail Review is another really interesting one. This one came out of a project that was commissioned by the National Health Service. I'm going to demo something slightly about this later. Um, Another really big thing that's happened this year is Code Red CMS. Anyone who's, who's familiar here with, uh, with Code Red? Apart from the two of the creators who are here. Um, Code Red is, uh, is a really interesting project, and it was some, I felt like kind of a little bit nervous about it when I, when I, when I first came across it. And it's, uh, I guess you could describe it as a sort of distribution of Wagtail. So it's, uh, it's, a new, it's another open source project. Um, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a CMS that sits, runs on top of Wagtail. And it's, I think, the use case, and I, you know, uh, uh, Vince, you, you, you must kind of correct me if I haven't got this right, but I think the use case is really for, uh, for people who, who want to, who, who might have otherwise have used uh, WordPress and who want to be able to create marketing sites quickly, um, but, uh, but uh, they want to kind of take advantage of all the things that the Wagtail adds as well. So Wagtail, you know, has a philosophy of making a really clean separation between content and presentation. And, um, and being completely unopinionated about the front end and, and how your user experience should, should be. But that does mean that you need a developer to make those decisions for you. And Code Red just has a lot of very sensible defaults, which means that you can start a Code Red site and have uh, you know, an effective, effective project much more quickly. And then if you want, you can kind of, I don't know if this is the right word, but you could sort of eject from Code Red and just treat it as a normal Wagtail project later. And, um, and the, the Code Red team have done a really great job of building this and iterating quickly and building a community around it. And they're also, uh, they're also contributing back upwards in, into Wagtail. So that's been a really positive thing for us. Also, third-party content has improved. So um, this time, you know, a year ago, I'd say most of the content about Torchbox, blog posts, and so on, were about Wagtail, were probably coming from Torchbox. And uh, I was really keen that that wasn't. And, and that's clearly not the case anymore. So uh, there's a lot more about Wagtail that comes from outside Torchbox and that comes from within it. And, um, you know, the people who, someone who posts, who started a Reddit channel, people who are posting blogs, 
This guy Michael Yin's done a really nice. He's done an ebook and uh, he has a really nice tutorial site. Um, but the biggest one for me has been uh, this site, LearnWagtail.com, which uh, I hope some of you have seen. And if not, then you should definitely bookmark it. LearnWagtail.com is, uh, is, uh, is a set of videos, very, very professionally produced, and uh, and it, they will they start from like uh, just beginning with Wagtail to some really advanced features like uh, how to build headless sites. There's a whole set of uh, there's five tutorials on headless sites, so there's 40 now, and it's I think it's been watched by tens of thousands of hours worth of watching. Is that right, Caleb? And I'm very happy that Caleb is here today and is going to be talking a bit about contributing to Wagtail. And, um, and Caleb has joined the Caleb, who's, who's responsible for, for, for Learn Wagtail, um, as, as I said, joined the core team. And uh, we're really, really grateful for the work he's done. So it's an amazing resource. OK, there's all the good stuff. It's probably not all the good stuff, but that's some of the good stuff that I'm going to talk about. Um, what about some, some other things? So, some of you will know that uh, Torchbox, we had a, we had a really big um, pitch for, uh, for NPR. So NPR, you know, really is this amazing, prestigious organization. And uh, they wanted a new CMS for NPR.org and all the, all the radio stations. And uh, this is an amazing opportunity for us and for Wagtail. And we got down, we were shortlisted to the final two, and it was a, a huge amount of work. And in the end, they didn't, they didn't choose Wagtail. And, you know, that's just the, like the real kind of commercial realities of running an agency and pitching for work that you sometimes you know you invest in pitches and, and you don't always get them and I understand the reasons that they that they made for finally making their decision but it was um, it was painful because because it would have been such a boost I think particularly here in the US uh, to be able to talk about NPR but also because I think you know if, if they made another decision then there'd be like 10 people here from NPR today and there would have been a big <laughs> would have been a big push in um, you know Wagtail in the, in the news and media sector which I think is a particularly interesting place for Wagtail to be um, so, so that was a shame, but um, actually some good things came out of this because we had to work really hard for this, for this NPR pitch and we had to think hard about uh, the problems that um, news and media organisations are trying to deal with and uh, we at Torchbox we built some features for Wagtail in kind of proof of concept stage that would, that would help deal with this and um, I'm going to risk a live demo and see if I can show you one of these now. So, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Everyone see, see the screen okay? So this is, uh, this is um, a proof of concept site that we built for NPR for this, this pitch. And uh, uh, it's a multi-site, so we can run different, different stations under it. Here's the news section. And then within the news section, I now want to add a new page. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing that we, I think we've been aware of for a while, but uh, just kind of came to mind and, and was brought into focus by doing this project is that um, while we are trying to make the best ordering experience we can with Wagtail, and I talked before about how we use Drafttail, and uh, uh, that uh, it's, uh, as much as we would like Wagtail to be like the, the, the place where people originate content, we know that editors and writers and journalists <coughs> use, use other systems. I wonder if there's somebody else we, who needs muting. So, um, speakers. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, and the reality is so that people people start their content in other places, and we want to think about. Um, I guess we, when we when we're thinking about White House design, we want to think about not just about. Uh, you know, uh, bringing everything into Wagtail, but just thinking about the real world usage. And uh, and one of the ways that people write, and in fact the way that we write at Torchbox, is uh, we might start content in Google Docs or Dropbox Paper or something like that. And then I'll share it with somebody and then they'll comment on it. And then when we're happy, then we'll co copy, and, copy and paste it into our site. So we wanted to kind of think about how we would solve, how we would solve that problem. So here I could add a news page as normally, but uh, instead now I'm going to click, let me just zoom in one more, news page from Google Document. And uh, I think, so normally I get an OAuth pop-up uh, from, Google, from Google, but uh, I've already done that now, so, uh, so I'm, I'm logged in. I have access to, I don't know, tens of thousands of Google documents on, in our corporate Google account, and now I can search them. Um, so I look for NASA. Amazingly, the, uh, the, it's pretty quick, the API for Google Docs. It actually feels quicker than using drive.google.com for some reason. <laughs> um, uh, so here's a couple of pieces about, uh, about NASA, and uh, if I click on one, it will open in Google Docs. Um, this is a story from NPR about uh, how NASA will pay you to lie in bed 
to see how your body adapts to weightlessness. But you can imagine that I'm, I'm, I'm writing this piece now as, as a journalist, um, and I think, well, maybe we should have uh, uh, another header here. Um, I'll copy that, and maybe I'll make that a massive header. That's appropriate. And then, you know, I might, I might share this with my colleague, and they'll suggest some changes, and I'll make them. Um, uh, so then I'm, I'm, I'm ready with, in Wagtail, and, uh, and I'm going to import it. Uh, so now it's uh, going to the, to the Google API. It's ex looking at the, the content. It's extracting a title. Uh, uh, there's no kind of published date available in the API. I'm going to pick an author. Um, I can take that first line from the summary. So you can see now that it's extracted. Uh, actually, that's probably the best one here. It's extracted the content from the document. Uh, it's noticed there was an inline image, so it's created an image in Wagtail and referenced that here in, in, as a stream field block. Um, you might notice this stream field UI is, is a bit different. So this is using the, the React stream field uh, third party package. Um, uh, it's, it's, create, it's found my uh, hello Wagtail space block, and so I can preview that now. And it's going to render it in the, in the template at the front. So it's our image, and there's our header, and so on. Um, and uh, this is proof of concept, but it, it's working pretty well. And uh, I haven't found yet too many edge cases where it doesn't work. And uh, feels like this is, um, this is a really interesting way of thinking about, about uh, how we adapt to, to real world usage. And um, I think it's something that's going to be immediately useful, definitely to us at Talksbox and, and to many of our clients. And I, what, I'm, what I'm keen to do is the next step, step is to, uh, to make this more pluggable at the back end so that you can have different sources that could be drop off paper or maybe Markdown files in a GitHub repository or uh, Office 365 if you've used that. Um, I think just generally these this, this ideas about how we get content in are interesting. And here's another, here's another example. Uh, if I can present this again. This, this next one was not from, um, uh, not from the, this is actually came from the Wagtail space in Arnhem in the Netherlands. And this is built around the idea of, um, you know how uh, news sites will often have stories that have been authored um, uh, ahead of time, but also you might have breaking news sites. So this is often, quite often in common in sports, but also like, you know, we've got a new prime minister in the UK and, uh, you know, there was sort of on the day he was presented, there's like this, this kind of rolling coverage in the BBC. So this is, a, a, you know, a, a thought about how to manage it. So, so Cohen, Cohen's just created a, uh, a new channel in Slack and immediately that slack that is available that's a new section in wagtail and now he's going to write a message so you imagine you're in a field you're a journalist you're uh, talking about boris johnson's haircut and uh, you <laughs> type in your uh, title and immediately it's creating streamfield blocks and publishing them to your page so you can then go back and edit this in in wagtail um cool thing that uh, this is all happening quite quickly that you might have missed is that you can also edit so you know how in slack you can kind of up arrow and change and uh, that also send, sends a webhook the edit action so that we, we're going back and fixing this and you can upload images and embeds and so on um so he's put his cat image and it appears and so, um, <laughs> so uh I mean, yeah that's really cool and that's definitely very proof of concept here at the moment but i i just i like this idea about thinking about how editors and journalists and authors are working and trying to trying to adapt wagtail around that uh anyway i feel like i'm slightly you know i'm supposed to be talking about the bad things um so uh, uh another thing that i feel is like is holding us up a bit is, is the front end tooling and this is not my area of expertise but i know that if you if i look back on the issues on wagtail people are saying asking for uh for, for different ways that, um, that we could present the admin interface. And uh, actually, uh, two people from, from City of Austin here today are going to be talking a little bit about this. Um, and, uh, and, and often the answer to that is just that uh, it's hard to do that in Wagtail. You know, Wagtail is uh, built five years ago, and the set of technologies that we used to build it then, things like you know traditional Django templates and jQuery, and uh, are probably not the set of technologies that we would use if we were going to start right now. Um, and uh, that means that uh, there's a lot of work to do in this, and, and you can either try to kind of iteratively clean that up and refactor the CSS. We've made some good headway in that. Uh, Naomi here has done a great job of helping with uh, refactoring the CSS, but there's, there's a lot to do on, the, on, the, on building the UI. And we want the UI to be like, best in class. 
So we're, I feel like we're at a bit of a crossroads about do we kind of keep iterating on this and, and improving it, um, or do we need to have a kind of clean, clean start? Do we need a, like a, a Whitetail 3.0 that is a modern JavaScript application with an API, which would be a really big piece of work and, and would have some, you know, would mean that we would break backwards compatibility in a way that we haven't had to before. It would mean a much harder jump, I think, between two and three than, than we ever had in the past. But perhaps is necessary if we want to lay the foundations for a quantum management system that's going to be relevant in the next five and ten years. I'd be really interested to talk to you all about that and, uh, while we're here and see what your opinions are. Um, it's, this is a very different point. There's diversity about the community. You know, in, in, in common with, with tech communities everywhere, the majority of people who are kind of involved in Whitetail are male, white, Western, able-bodied. I must say, you know, here today, then uh, I think we, if, I, if, I, if we had measured this last year to this year, I think we're, everything's going in the right direction. And, you know, the Django community is, is, is doing well in this front. But I'm also keen that, that, that Wagtail is, you know, is, is a, represents the kind of the, the, the diverse communities of people who are, in, who, you know, should be involved in technology. Deployment, you know, this is a kind of classic Django thing, really, but... Um, and this is an interesting point we were talking about last night at, uh, at uh, supper of the organisers at Tim's. That um, uh, many of the questions we get on Whitetail Slack and Stack Overflow are about how do I deploy my site? And the easy answer to give to this is uh, that's not really a Whitetail question. Just you know, read the Django documentation. But um, and it's quite tempting to do that. But actually, I think what we've realised is that. Uh, it's good that people are asking us this because it means they're coming, they're using Wagtail not just because they're Django developers and they want to do CMS, but because they they're interested in Wagtail. They like Wagtail for, for for the features that it has, and it means that I guess it's our responsibility to, to help them get to deployment to launch. And uh, and there's still I think it's it's still one of the tricky areas of, of being a Python or a, you know Python, doing Python on the web that uh, deployment just still isn't as easy as having a folder full of PHP files and pushing them somewhere and having it just run. And there's definitely good work happening in, in this area. So Divio, who are represented here by uh, Joel, where's Joel, um, have you know really good. So they've been they've done a great job of uh, supporting Wagtail, and you can talk to, to Joel if, if you're interested in, in Divio services. And you know I think increasingly the kind of um, uh, container managed services, so where you just have doc file and you push it somewhere, are getting simpler. But I would really like to have a better answer on this, um, and uh, I'm not sure. How much that's the responsibility of Wagtail and the Wagtail community, but I feel like whether or not it's our responsibility, it's still an impediment to to Wagtail being, you know, the next WordPress. So what's next? What's coming up in the next year? There's going to be more events. So uh, this one, uh, we're going to have another one in the UK, probably in our Bristol office, uh, to which you're all very welcome. Bristol is a lovely city. Uh, there's one. There's going to be one in Cape Town, uh, which is possibly even lovelier than Bristol, and uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, definitely has more mountains and oceans. Um, and uh, that's that's going to be December, January, I think. And again, you're all very welcome to that. There's going to be continued focus on accessibility, and um, this is. I think it's a. So it's it's wonderful to be able to have this enthusiasm and energy for what's such an important part of the project and uh, although you know it may not be something that many people in this room will benefit from directly um, that it's it's uh, I think it's you know it's, it's really really key really critical for us that we do this right and I think uh, we I may have felt two years ago that we were we were I'm, we were we were pretty good at this but it's become very clear to me that we actually haven't been very good at this and you know, there are a lot of people who are worse than this than us, but uh, no, we, you know, we don't want to be just like the least worst people. We want to be doing, <laughs> we want to be doing, we want to be the really good people. And um, uh, so that's kind of the theme of this, uh, particularly I think of tomorrow and the sprint on Saturday that we want to. I mean, it's not, it's not a requirement to work on accessibility folk stuff, but we're really encouraging people to. And there's, I know there's a lot of people here who, who are keen to do that. So a continued push. One of the things that's been really good for us is. Uh, that uh, the UK government, so we've been working on a project there for uh, Department of International Trade. They are uh, perhaps, I think someone said that they're the only, uh, the only part of the UK government that's currently growing as we panic about the impending doom of uh, Brexit and the disappearance of our local markets. Um, 
but uh, they've been they've, they're using Wagtail, and they have uh, you know there, there is there's requirements for government departments to to provide accessible tools. So they've funded a lot of this, that development in the last few months, which has been wonderful, and we we thank them publicly for that. Uh, the headless model continues to grow. Who here is, uses Wagtail in a headless way, or is interested in doing that? A few people here, and uh, you know we're noticing in our own, among our own clients that this this is just becoming more and more popular model. So this is the idea, if you're not familiar with it, that uh, that the content management system takes care of the, uh, the authoring and the workflow process, but some other bit of technology is, is responsible for delivering it. And that could be like a React application or a view, or it could be a mobile phone, or uh, even another set of Django templates. Um, and that we're, no, we're, we're seeing this as a, as a more and more common model. And it, you know, uh, while it can add cost and expense and complexity in some cases, it off, there are, there's some really important advantages in others too. And uh, I think it's really, it's going to be critical for Wagtail to, to have a good story around headlessness to stay relevant. And actually it's done well. I mean, we had a great talk here last year from someone at rice.edu uh, about their headless site. And there's some really big successful headless sites out there. But also there are some points where Wagtail hasn't been, hasn't worked quite so well. I was going to show you a demo about how we're doing this better already, but I'm, I'm about to run out of time. Uh, if anyone's interested in headless stuff, come and see me and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you some, some examples of this. I think that's going to be a push for the rest of this year too. And then an increased UI focus. So uh, whether or not we, we make this kind of the big decision about the, you know, the, the move to a more drastic change in 3.0, we, uh, particularly at Torchbox, are going to invest in making the UI for Wagtail best in class. And uh, I think one of the reasons that Wagtail was popular in, in the kind of first two or three months was because it, it looked good and it looked better than some of the other content management systems. But I think we, we, we want to we kind of continue on that and not just about how it looks, but uh, just thinking about that authoring experience all the time, how preview works, about the responsiveness. I have had to rush through that last bit because uh, I probably went on too long at the start. Um, I'm out of time now and I think we should move on to the next session. But thank you all very much and please, please come and talk to me if you have any questions about this. I'm looking forward to the next few days. Thank you.